Governor's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Please stand to pledge allegiance. Clerk. Lorraine County Board of Commissioners will present a Lorraine County Bicentennial Bell to Al Urbanic from Lorraine County Veterans Association. Oh. Al, would you please come up? Where do you want to get it to? Around here? I guess so. Come around the side. Sure. I don't know. We can't decide how to do this. But isn't this beautiful? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. I'm going to present it to you. We know you are. Okay. Thank you, you so much. Yeah, what is Thank okay. you. I think that. Can you get it now? Yeah, I, I can go. It did a beautiful job on that. I'd like to uh, call up uh, members of, uh, some of the members of the BFW 1079 Fire Squad, uh, Paul Warner, Captain Core, and Marsha Woods. So please come up. These three gentlemen not only honorably served our country, but uh, they continue to do so with their community. And uh, any time the uh, commissioners or ourselves call upon a need for uh, military honors, uh, they're there. So I'm going to present this to Pat Lepore, who's the captain of this squad. This is to uh, VFW 1079 Rifle Squad 2003. Thank you for everything, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. You've got to thank Al here because he said he's going to get this for us. And he did. He did. <laughs> he did a beautiful job on that. Okay, take care, guys. All right, it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Carl. Thanks. Thank you. Elections. 1045, Bill Harper, Executive Director of Lorain County Board of Mental Health, and Lane Georges, Executive Director of Alcohol and Drug Abuse Services, will be here. Regards to the Commissioner's continued support of the separation of Lorain County Board of Mental Health and Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Board of Lorain County. At 1130, there will be a walk through the Lorain County Justice Center. At 3 p.m. will be the County Planning Commission. Under resolutions uh, number... Just, just a minute. Can we introduce the girls that are up here? I'm sure mm -hmm. people are yeah. wondering why they're here. These are our shadows today. And I happen to mention that it's unusual that we get kids from O'Leary High School, and they're very proud that they're here today. And I want to thank them. And I will let them introduce themselves. Get used to public speaking, girls. I'm Jennifer Sherman. From O'Leary High. I'm Melody Shenko. O'Leary High. Mm -hmm. I'm Alicia Caswell from Wellington High School. Good. Welcome, girls, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Dan oh, Dan's got oh, another sorry. lady over there, too. I'm Peggy Hawk, and I go to Larry High School. And another Larry High School student. All right. You didn't have far to come today, huh? Mm -hmm. Anyone, Welcome. any other high school student here? Nope. Okay. Under resolutions number one, Job and Family Services Bills. So okay, Jen Jennifer, I'll second. Jennifer, Discussion. would you like to vote on this? Do you think we should pay the bills? Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Nay? Oh. You want to pay them? Yeah. Um. You think we should pay the bills for uh, yes. human services? Okay. Aye. Investments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. There is one advance and two repayments. I thought it's okay. There was three total. Yes. 
So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Requisitions? I had some questions on some of those. 1674, a Ford, Jim, a Ford truck for the commissioner's department. must be maintenance, but I thought we just got one last year. Uh, we didn't purchase the truck last year. Commissioner, we purchased one, I believe, two year years before. ago. Uh, this is a, uh, a small uh, dump truck. Uh, we need uh, uh, something to uh, uh, use in the summertime. I spoke with the maintenance department, and we, we also uh, upgraded it to a four-wheel drive, so we'll be able to do uh, plowing and salting with it during the winter time. But we also always need more trucks for that. Uh, so this, this truck will have uh, year-round usability for the maintenance department. And some of our trucks are starting to get a little old down there. We've been purchasing them over the last 10, 10 years. How many do we have total? Uh, we have three that plow snow, and I think we have three more that, that are just two-wheel drive trucks in addition to that right now on the, on the squad. Uh, the funding is available for this. Uh, uh, we have saved uh, some money through the year. Uh, but, uh, we have we're creating more and more parking lots all the time and uh, getting them all plowed and uh, and then especially in the summertime doing all our uh, grounds work is, is, is very taxing on the fleet. Okay, 1653, which was um, batteries, 12 C and D batteries, and um, the amount is 1,008. One thousand eight hundred dollars. I don't think those. Are, I think that those are our, our, our backup batteries for the foam system. I, I'd have to look at that. Uh, it might be J T Packard. I, I, I just if I can just refresh my memory from the uh, purchase order. Okay, for that one. Just Sixteen. For just for clarification, those were the backup foam right. batteries that need yes. replacing. Sixteen fifty four. What was that? Claim overpayment, Superior Electric. These are uh, about, I want to say about a year ago, maybe it may not have been quite that long. We had an incident of vandalism on the, on the job site over at the Justice Center. We followed an insurance claim and we were reimbursed under our insurance claim and now we need to forward that money out to the vendors. It comes to us, but they were the ones that suffered the loss and now we send it back out to them. I don't like the word overpayment. What it really is, is just a transfer of funds. It has to come in from our insurance company to us and then we transfer it out to the vendors. It does have vandalism on here, so, okay. All right, that's all the questions I have. Thanks, Commissioner. Thank you, Jim. So do we have a motion? Oh, wait a minute. No, there is one. there is something else. There's a lot of furniture on here for domestic relations. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? Yes, I know. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's going to go over to the Justice Center or if we're just going to disregard this after the Justice Center We We, 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 we uh, took a look at that. We spoke to domestics. Uh, the judges are buying some furnishings that will eventually uh, work their way to the Justice Center when they, when they move. They, uh, they understand that we have a bit of a weakness in our uh, FF and E budget, our fixtures, furnishing, and equipment budget uh, for the Justice Center, and they are trying uh, to work with us towards the, the future needs of their departments over there. And we saw that last year with the domestics when they they purchased a a large amount of uh, uh, furniture for anticipated need, and they have it in storage. I believe it's still in storage. That stuff that they bought last year. So uh, they're just planning ahead, Commissioner. Okay, that's all I have. Thank Thanks. You. I'll move for approval. It's really difficult to hear back there. I'll move for approval. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Basie? Aye. <laughs> Travel expenses? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Basie? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Authorized various personnel actions as indicated on the summary for employees within the jurisdiction of the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. Do we need an executive session? Uh, we probably should go in just to uh, basically discuss that, that labor contract issue briefly if we can. Thank you. We couldn't hear that. We're going into executive session to discuss um, labor union contract. 
Under the Commissioners, number 10, accept alternate number 9 with South Shore Electric, Inc., Elyria, Ohio, in the amount of $81,850 <coughs> on bid package 13A, security equipment for Lorain County Justice Center. Issue a notice to proceed letter effective November 6, 2003, and authorize County Administrator to notify County Auditor to release retainage at completion of said project. Jim, you look like kind of anxious there. Well, is this mic a little better? Yes. Okay. Normally I don't have such a problem projecting. I, these, they must be gained down today. Uh, this is an alternative uh, uh, that we bid out under the Justice Center because during the course of uh, finalizing the documents, uh, we became aware, uh, that the project team on the commissioner side of the house, that there was no public address system in the original scope of this building. And we have some very serious concerns and reservations about not having a generalized public address system for the whole Justice Center, uh, given sometimes the needs to evacuate a building or conduct fire drills. Uh, and there's a merit of different events that could occur. Uh, I am, uh, I'm, I was very unhappy when, when I learned this and I asked them to propose an alternative bid. The good part of this is that we're able to absorb this additional cost within the, the budget constraints of what we're operating under. We're not asking for any additional money to do this. This will be an $80,000 enhancement to the building without asking for an additional $80,000. So we've been uh, keeping a very tight rein on the, on, the, on the purse, the wallet, the pocketbook, however you want to describe it. And so we're able to, to uh, build this into the building for, uh, for uh, this project. I think it's necessary. I don't think it's prudent to build a building this size without without a, a unified public address system that's go throughout the building. And I would urge you to approve it uh, so that we can uh, move forward with the project. Okay, thank you. I'll so moved. Second. Further discussion? Ms. Facey. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Under Community Development Department, award contract to Lad Trucking, Leary, Ohio, in the amount of $4,070 for a sewer tie-in for Lula. Caruza, 45635 tel Telegram Road, I think it should be Telegraph Road maybe? Yeah. Amherst Township. Two bids were received, this being the most responsive, and will be paid from account 12602 2501 450 a 2002 CDBG formula activity. So, so moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Approve Lorain County's Community Housing Improvement Program CHIP grant agreements for FY 2003 in the amount of $497,500, $298,000 are home funds, and the remaining balance is $199,500 in CDBG funds. So moved. Second. Discuss. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Under the Solid Waste Management District, Approve the community grant funding request for the year 2004 in the amount of $1,450,000 to be paid from account 20201-5302-490802 recycled grants. Camden Township, Kipton Village, and Village, Village of South Amherst did not apply for any funding requests. The total requests were $1,535,212.12, which is beyond the budget. Therefore, the request from 15 communities asking for additional funding was reduced by $85,121.12. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Under MRDD, approve agreement between Lorain County Board of Mental Retardation and Lorain County Prosecutor for the support of mental retarded, developmentally disabled individuals and declare it necessary, necessary to transfer funds pursuant to ORC section 5705.15 and 5705.16. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Under the Sanitary Engineer, approve an addendum to existing Rolling Heights allotment agreement dated October 31st, 2002, resolution number 02-825, and authorize the revised plan to include Elyria Avenue in a sewer service area based upon petition received October 17, 2003. The additional cost to the existing engineering agreement with K.E. McCartney & Associates, Inc., Mansfield, Ohio, is in the amount of $15,400 to be advanced from the general fund to be reimbursed when the project is constructed and assessed. Did you say $15,400? Yes, it is $400. So that's... So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Cortez? 
Uh, no reports or additional comments this morning. Thank you. There is no prosecutor. He's at that Oracle meeting. Mm -hmm. Commissioner's report. Commissioner Blair. I have no report this morning, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jim, I just wanted to ask something. Uh, once before, I asked about Jeff Volt being on the Fair Housing Board and not living in the county. Yes. Uh, I don't believe we've done anything with that yet. I, what are our intentions? I discussed it with him and, and, and uh, uh, shared the board's concerns. Um, I don't have the ability to tell him to resign or quit. He did not indicate to me either way what he was going to do. But I did relay the message shortly after the rest. Can we legally have someone that doesn't live in the county on a board like that? Uh, what I what I would recommend is that I communicate with the prosecutor's office and get a letter ruling from them. Uh, and if they uh, so verify, then I think it would be cause for removal by this board. It is not a voluntary resignation. Yeah, it would be a good cause. Okay. okay. That's all I had. Thanks. Is there any old business? I have none. I have none. Under new business, Thursday, November 27, 2003, and Friday, November 28, 2003, the county offices will be closed in observance of Thanksgiving. Therefore, the commissioners will not meet again until Thursday, December 4. Board correspondence? I move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Public comment? Is there anyone here that would like to address the board comments or <coughs> questions? brief so we can get out of here early I can just quote out of the paper Robert Kish 8 C's Elyria Ohio I'd like to be your conscience perhaps your guide I cannot be your watchdog I'm not allowed into that back room but there's an odor emanating from it it has to do with the elections board we've been chasing that dog around for a long time in here it states in the paper that the building, I'm stating, you've stated in the past that the Gates building is currently paid and maintained. I'm aware of it. I've been in it. I haven't been on the upper floors, but there was double the space that was required. It's available. In today's newspaper, it is stated that Ohio's Secretary of State, that's the Secretary of State, I don't know him either, because I'm nobody, <laughs> orders local boards to install a high-speed communications line by the end of December. Granted, that leaves a big loophole because the year is not noted. And stalling is a tactic of government. I have worked at the FAA and I know how long they can stall on even a safety issue. So, I have also made another call this morning and I have found that the Gates Building has not one high-speed communications line, they have two. One is the main, the other is the backup. It is in 911. It seems to me that the simplest, fastest, cheapest route to go would be the building you have spoke so highly of in the past, the Gates Building for the Election Board. We're not looking 100 years into the future because I don't believe any of us in this room has the ability to look 100 years in the future and say there won't be room for the election board 100 years from now. We need room for the records division 100 years from now. All I know is that if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Thank you. Bob, I have something to say to you. I would ask that you please do not refer to yourself as nobody because we're all somebody and we're all somebody special. We all have something different to offer. And I don't know, I just wanted to comment on that because you, you've done that before, but I want you to know that you are somebody and each of us are somebody individually special. And Good morning, Commissioners, Mr. Cordes. And, and I have to ask here. that you give your name and spell your last okay. name, please. My first name is Anne. My last name is Molnar. I live at 2306 East 31st Street in Lorraine. And good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I read, I too read the article in the paper today. I'm here today because I've spoke to many of my constituents in the city of Lorraine. And now this is only a, uh, a suggestion. 
and I've already spoke to Mr. Cordes about one space in Lorraine that would be a possibility for the Board of Elections, the Lorraine County Board of Elections to be placed. But however, since talking to several more of my, constitu my, my constituents, they have made a recommendation and hopefully that the commissioners and Mr. Cordes would take this into consideration. We have uh, in Lorraine on Fairless Drive off of 57. It is called the Builder Square. It is empty. Now, I don't have, I can give you some particulars about that building. Uh, it is um, owned by the Lorraine Association of Michigan uh, Co-Partnership. Uh, the taxes are paid by, uh, by Kmart. They are, however, in arrears of 54738 in taxes. Land is total 10.6 acres. I'm sorry, but I forgot to get the square feet of the building, but it is a nice big building. And northeast of that building is Bank One. On the south end of that building, you will find the Dollar Family Store, skateboard recreation, and Save-A-Lot grocery. Ceiling in that building is 20 feet high. They have a large docking area there in the rear of the building and plenty of parking space. Now the reason why I'm bringing this today to you, I just wanted to bring something else up here, that if this building should be considered, please understand that that would be a central location to Elyria and people living far west, they could exit off of 90 to 57 north. It would also not be, it wouldn't be too far away from the people living in central Lorraine, downtown, and on the east side. And I did talk to people in various areas, and they thought that was a great idea. And uh, however, I don't know the condition of the building. I know it's empty, it has been empty for quite a while, and I sincerely hope that perhaps the commissioners would give this some thought. And and we can use the money in the rain. <laughs> Anne, would you give your title, please? My title is I'm Councilwoman at Large for the, for the City of Lorraine, and I'm also a private citizen. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. That was a good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? Mary Butler, B-U-T-L-E-R. I think, excuse me, Mary, but I think that might, might come off of there. No? That's fine. Are you okay? As I stated when I first gave my first transportation talk here to you months ago, I've been a formal part of Lorraine County Transit for the last 10 years. Eight of those years were as an appointed member of Lorraine County Transit Board, one and a half years as an alternate, and the years before that, going back into the 1970s as a resource person concerning people with disabilities. Even though I'm off the Lorraine County Transit Board, I still attend all of the Lorraine County Transit Board meetings. Why? Because transportation is a necessity for poor people, people with disabilities, and many older adults. Today I want to address the statements that were made after the second resolution to take over Lorain County Transit was passed by the commissioners. There were many statements made which were inaccurate and heavily suggest negligence on the actions of former Lorain County Transit board members like myself as well as those currently on the transit board and transit staff. My concern is that there is no reason for the commissioners to take over the operation of Lorain County Transit. I am very concerned through lack of experience and training in public transit that the system that many of us have put years into improving will now deteriorate and may financially run itself out of business. You have all received copies of these statements and the responses, so this should not be new to you. 
For your convenience, though, I do have packets of information which will be distributed when I finish speaking. The statements were all made at the September 4th Commissioner's Board meeting. First statement, Elizabeth asked if Lorain County Transit had any indication that this was coming down the pike. Commissioner Moore stated, quote, they had some board meetings where this avenue was a possibility, just like the airport. They had the same discussions. How would Commissioner Moore know this when he's never attended a Lorain County Transit board meeting? Lorain County Transit board members know what is stated in the Ohio Revised Code and knew that the commissioners could take over the transit system legally. That had been mentioned at a Lorain County Transit Board meeting, but with no discussion or concern that this was a real possibility. There was never any word from a commissioner or the administrator that this would happen. The only notice given was by the newspaper uh, until a week later when Lorain County Transit received a copy of the resolution passed by the commissioners. It seems to me there was a total lack of communication from the commissioner's office to the transit board. Lorain County Transit was finally given a copy of the approved resolution on October the 22nd by Mr. Innes at a transit board meeting. Number two, Commissioner Vasey made several comments about Lorain County Transit having a multitude of problems including scheduling, routing, and management, and having no control over the driving, scheduling, washing of vehicles, and so on. She also stated that Lorain County Transit contracts the service in which a middleman gets the profit. She ended the comment with Lorain County Transit has only four people who are just office people. My answer, when buses take a specific route, like down a residential street, it is as a, a result of careful analysis and planning in conjunction with NOACA. Commissioner Vasey mentioned Artino Street specifically. That route was at the request of the City of Oberlin with NOACA's recommendation after they had completed a study in that area of Oberlin. What went into that decision? There's a Murray Ridge workshop there. The city felt it would promote more business in the industrial park loaded, located there. Plus, bus route timing was taken into consideration. It takes less than two minutes to travel Artino Street. The bus routes must be designed, timed, and adjusted by professional transit consultants who have helped design transit systems across the United States. Since Lorain County Transit did the redesign of routes, which was kicked off in August of 2000 right here at the administration building with free cake and donuts for everyone, fixed route ridership has increased from 14,558 trips for that month to 51,641 trips for the month of August 2003. That's an increase of 355% in just two years. The Lorain County Transit Board thinks that this does not indicate problems with routing or scheduling but that good scheduling and routing has been extremely successful. The Lorain County Transit Board and staff have full control and authority over operations. There are monthly operation meetings with First Transit to address any issues that may surface, to go over operations related to safety following FTA and ODOT rules and regulations, to address maintenance and administration. More frequent meetings have occurred when needed. The Lorain County Transit Board receives monthly reports from First Transit, which is always a part of the monthly packet of information that commissioners receive from Lorain County Transit staff. 
the Lorain County Transit staff are not just office people. They provide all the necessary management to operate the transit system, plus they monitor all aspects of the service provided by the contractor. This involves applying for grants throughout the year, monitoring those grants, making sure each billing is listed under the correct source of funding, submitting drawdowns for reimbursements, doing the general accounting for a $5 million operation, purchasing, preparing contracts, marketing and advertising, which brings in additional funding, customer service and education, route evaluations, producing maps, schedules, and other brochures, and keeping records to meet FTA and ODOT requirements, as well as answering the phone and questions that come in all day long. Some of the FTA and ODOT requirements are making sure the vehicles are properly <coughs> maintained, compliance with DBE, Buy America, Title VI, the Americans with Disabilities Act, of course, which I'm especially interested in, as most people with disabilities, regardless of age, are among the most vulnerable of our riders. Safety and security regulations, drug-free workplace regulations, the drug and alcohol program, equal employment opportunity records, planning, charter regulations, and any other requirements that do not fit into those categories. The size of the bus used is for the largest capacity of that route for the day. It would cost more to be running back buses to exchange them for smaller buses during the slower time than what it is worth, not taking into consideration the time involved in doing so. The empty bus that Commissioner Vasey stated she saw in Oberlin at 945, empty, was a dial-a-ride bus that had completed its runs for the day and was going back for the night. We know that because of the time that she stated she saw it. First Transit, the contracted bus service, is able to make a profit because they are a nationwide company which can take advantage of services at a much lower rate than a county can. For instance, insurances. These services are purchased through a national company at a better rate than what the county could provide. The Lorraine County Transit Board has examined the issue of contracting out or running the system it's, itself and found it to be more cost effective to contract out. Uh, there was a more recent uh, uh, analysis done in August of this past year, and if you'd like a copy of that, I'm sure it would be available to you. When the commissioners gave a 4 to 5 percent increase to all county workers the last two years, the Lorain County staff's salaries were frozen with no increase. They had already agreed to do the same for 2004. Years before this freeze, the Lorain County Transit Board gave smaller increases, about half as much, to Lorain County Transit staff than what the commissioners gave to county workers. Lorain County Transit has a sign hanging in their lobby which states, Lorain County Transit's passengers are always our top priority. That expresses how they have conducted their business. First Transit has made concessions since 2000 also. Lorain County Transit renegotiated their contract to the lowest amount that LCT has ever paid a contractor per hourly rate. And they have frozen that rate for the last two years with no increase and agreed to continue that freeze for 2004. Number three, Commissioner Moore stated, the executive director of Lorain County Transit said that we had $3 million from Senator DeWine, but we were informed in Chicago there was no money for LCT. That statement is incorrect. At the time of the general manager's statement, 
four million dollars had been applied for, which would have yielded 3.2 million for the train station. The grant was applied for and the funds were earmarked for LCT. There was information to be submitted to FTA electronically, which has not been done because the county had not provided the information as they said it was not available. The request was subsequently denied because the funding package had already been submitted to Congress. However, the end result was that Lorain County Transit was awarded $983,679 available upon completion of the FTA aforementioned requirements. There is a time frame on this process, but the money is still at FTA with LCT's name on it as reported in the Federal Register March the 12th of this year, page 11946. Number four, Commissioner Moore further stated we are not even on a list at NOACA. LCT has applied for a $600,000 NOACA Transportation Enhancement Grant and was given tentative approval. Ms. Moore and Mr. Cordes gave a presentation at NOACA and were told by Mr. John Hosick, the Assistant Director of Transportation for NOACA, that we would move up on their list of projects as we got ready to go to bid for construction. NOACA has said that it may be fiscal year 2005 or 2006, and a letter from NOACA dated January 23rd of this year states exactly that. Number Five, Commissioner Moore said if there was an employee, maybe we could work as a team and get the information so there's no communication issues and we could start getting these federal and state dollars which have been cut. The commissioners have not cut dollars to transit. Federal and state dollars have been cut. And I am going to refer you to the handout that will be handed out. Number five, please read the answer. Uh, there was a team that was working on this problem. Number six, Commissioner Moore stated, I have been asking Lorain County Transit since December, what are you going to do? I have yet to see anything. In April of 2003, Lorain County Transit's Board Vice Chair, Chair, General Manager, and Chief Fiscal Director met with each commissioner to discuss LT's, LCT's funding options for the next year. Lorain County Transit has given the commissioners multi-year projected budgets since 1999. Commissioner Moore said, quote, I might fund up to 1.2 million like we did this year, unquote. In reality, the funding for 2003 was $1,040,000. The other commissioners did not say anything. Then, Commissioner Moore requested two different plans from Lorain County Transit, utilizing the commissioners cutting their funding to $1.2 million. The first plan he wanted was what the pared-down system would look like. That was delivered on May the 7th. And the second plan he wanted was to illustrate what it would look like if all fixed route, which is the most efficient way to operate, were eliminated and only dial -a ride was left. And that plan was delivered on June the 10th. Neither plan was ever commented on by any commissioner. Mary, I just want to say I appreciate your defending the transit and lobbying so that uh, to change the mind of the commissioners to keep it under the transit board. But I believe a resolution's already been passed to put it under the commissioners. 
and I feel that since the board contributes the majority of the revenue for the transit, that time will tell on how the transit is going to either better itself or, as you are concerned, uh, be less services. But in my opinion, I think it will be better. I'm sorry, Commissioner, to have to disagree, but the commissioners do not provide the majority of money to Lorain County Transit. It's a $5 million operation, and the commissioners gave $1,040,000 last year. And did the rest come from the taxpayers? The rest came from multiple sources, including oh, revenue from the boxes. But we are elected to... to but I'm saying the most does not the come from the commissioners. Sell. We are elected to watch tax dollars, and I believe the majority of the money that funds the transit is tax dollars. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address the board? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to point out we do have a meeting at, yes, we have a presentation at 10.15, 10 15, 15, so. so if you will keep your comments short, I'd appreciate it. No problem, Commissioners. My name is Eli Senquist, E-L-I, S-E-N-Q-U-I-Z. And I am the chairman of the Board of Lorain County Transit. Good morning, commissioners. As you just heard from a very passionate ex-board member, some of the response to your comments made on why you all felt you needed to take over Lorain County Transit. I was going to take the other half and respond to them. But I feel we do not need to go over them due to the fact you have received the copy and should have already read them. What is important is whoever is in charge of Lorain County Transit should always put the public first, always. You all have received the written and a copy of all the tapes from our community forum which were held recently. You can see that everyone who spoke had good things to say about Lorain County Transit and how they have changed their lives and style to rely on Lorain County Transit. In fact, they want transit to expand its routes and its hours rather than to cut. I know that every expansion is not a, excuse me, I know that expansion is not a possibility at this time due to the economy. But in fact, due to the economy, it is needed even more. Due to the layoffs and so forth, more people may end up relying on transit for one reason or another. During this entire process, not once, one of you have sat face to face with the board to discuss any issues even after we requested several times to be put on your agenda. Only recently have your legal representative, Mr. Innes and Mr. Cordes, have met with the general manager to pass on what is needed to transfer Lorain County Transit to Lorain County Commissioners smoothly. And to finish, we were appointed and put on the transit by you. We were entrusted to run transit correctly by you. And it's a shame that we have to read in the newspaper the decisions that Lorain County Transit made, and excuse me, Lorain County Commissioners made to take Lorain County Transit away. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Eli, I would just like to comment that I don't disagree with what you said. It probably would have been much better had we had a face-to-face -face meeting. But I just want to tell you publicly that our county administrator called the general manager that afternoon so that you wouldn't have to read it in the paper and was unable to reach her. So I do apologize for that. I really do. Okay, now we have a uh, scheduled appointment at 1015, and that's with the Board of Elections. Is there a spokesperson for the board? I'd like to introduce, I believe this is the board from the Board of Elections. Okay, uh, Tom Smith. Tom Smith. Tony Giardini, Bob, uh, John Blevins, Bob Russo, Marilyn Jacobic, and Ken Kelleher. Thank you for coming, you. Yes. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having us. I can just tell you how the facts have evolved. We, we've, we've gone along for some time, as you all know, looking to talk about combining and locating the Board of Elections. And we were operating out of two different locations, which appeared to be something we could do on a long-term basis while we looked at the options. Well, this changed about... Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Tom. They're saying that they can't hear you. Can, can you take the podium, please? Sure. Uh, let me start over. Uh, we, 
we have two board of elections in Lorain County, and we had assumed for the long for a long time that was something we could do on a continuing basis uh, while we talked about consolidating and relocating the board of elections. I don't think it'll I come off. That. It doesn't come off. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <clears throat> as you know, there have been there have been various locations talked about. There's, there was talk about the old bowling alley, and then that didn't seem to work. And then there was talk about. Uh, looking at the uh, one of the buildings was going to be vacated here in Luria and what changed the, the the landscape for us about 30 days ago we received a, a, a directive from the Secretary of State directing each of the 88 counties to have a T1 line in place in each county and to have that connected 24 7 with the Secretary of State's office so they would have access to instantaneous information on voter registration and items like that that really complicates the matter for the Board of Elections having two locations. I still am not sure I know the technical answer. I mean, but, but the issue may be that we can only have a T1 line in one of the two locations that we currently have, and that the other location would either have to be abandoned and combined with it on a temporary basis, or the second location would have to be connected by land computer lines to whichever office had the T1. There's also the option of putting in two T1s, but I'm told what that does, that makes it very complicated here in the county for, for our staff to manage data. So I think that, that's not going to go away, by the way, unless we find some place to move into immediately. If that, that, that issue will still be here even if, the, even if we move into a new building, because I'm assuming from day one, if you gave architects directions this morning, by the time they draw plans and a building is constructed, we're looking at least a year, maybe, maybe more. But let's focus on just the location of the board. I think you've, you've sensed over the years some debate about whether or not we should remain in the two large cities and, because it does, it does, it is convenient for the populace and it provides economic activity in those communities. I think the board now has come to the conclusion with this new directive we need to consolidate. And the commissioners, as I understand at your last board meeting, uh, <coughs> talked about constructing a new building in Illyria where the old, uh, where the bowling alley was located. Uh, we had had our board meeting last Friday to deal with election results, and we, we received a, 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 a request or, or a proposal uh, from an entity that owns a property out there, Billy Rollins Enterprises, to rent, and I'm not sure how to designate the building. It was, a, last I knew, it was sort of a computer school of sorts. It's about 16,000 square foot on the, on the north side of, of, of State Route 254. And that would be available for immediate occupancy, but only on a lease basis. And we understand the commissioners have said they don't want to lease anymore, they want to own. Uh, we also understand that you have property out on 254 adjacent to your current administration, administrative offices. Then that would be a, possibly an alternate location for, for, a, uh, for offices to be built. I think the consensus of the board right now is, is that if, it has to, if we're going to consolidate and we're leaving the two downtowns, uh, particularly the board members from Lorraine feel that it would be very inconvenient for people from Lorraine to drive all the way downtown Elyria and for people from Avon, Avon Lake to get all the way downtown Elyria. We would be better at the 254 location adjacent to Route 2, which is the hub of activity in the county. So that's sort of where we are. We, we, we had that letter delivered to you, and I apologize that apparently you, you've read about it in the paper before you received the letter. I apologize for that. That happens sometimes in, the, in, our, in our community. Uh, we're here to talk to you. I, th I think it's going to take a cooperative effort. We are, we're, this is not a situation where, where anyone's going to be making any demands. I think as I read this, the law, uh, we get to pick locations, but you have, to, you have to consent. And if you say no, we get to pick again. So that means we, we, we're, we're, going to, we're going to eventually get a consensus <laughs> for it to work. And we're here, open-minded, uh, looking to resolve this. Tom, I don't think you were here when Ann made uh, some comments about another location. I'm not sure. Uh, she she w mentioned one on Fairless Drive. I think it was the old uh, Hills building. Is that what it was? Builder Square. Builder Square. Oh yeah. Builder Square. That would be I know where the Builder Square building is. Yes. Okay. She mentioned that that might be available. I have no idea. I mean, there's vacant buildings all around the county. Jim, I think you did some research too. Right. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I was bringing the prosecutor up to speak where we were at. Tonight. You were doing some research on the Board of uh, Elections With and the location. Well, we've had uh, multiple discussions. You talked with Roland's representative? Yes, I did. I, I spoke with them uh, about the potentiality of selling us the building. Um, 
my last discussions were, were uh, left at that they were really not interested in selling the building. I also discussed a potential synthetic lease option to purchase with uh, agreement with them. And my last discussions with them that they, that they really weren't interested in doing that either, although there was uh, some discussion points about possibly leasing the building for five years and then having a renewal five-year lease and somewhere within the fifth, uh, that second five years, probably about the eighth year, an option to evaluate the market value of the building at that time and purchase it at that point. Uh, so the discussions, while they were held, they weren't, the outcomes weren't uh, what we desired uh, with regard to the, to the role in property. Can you elaborate a little bit on that uh, so-called latest proposal that... Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, what, what would be the benefit? <laughs> uh, it, uh, you referred to a synthetic <coughs> lease, and then you went on to talk about... Well, there's, um, there's all ways of purchasing property and buildings and entering into different uh, arrangements for different outcomes. Uh, you, can, you can enter into a lease agreement and get rate right credits towards the purchase of, a, of the building at some predetermined uh, time, maybe 10 or 15 percent of the, uh, the rent or the lease cost could be applied to a purchase price. The purchase price can be decided upon for the, for the property at this date and an option to purchase at that price at a later date and so forth. Uh, so it, it depends on the relationship of the, that the individuals are in, um, desire and what the outcomes are. And well, I guess my question was, I, I, maybe I didn't understand exactly what you said, but was there any indication on the part of this uh, uh, company that you spoke to that they would consider entering into some type of a lease other than just that of a purchase? Excuse me, of, of a lease. Would they entertain a purchase at a later date? The only discussion point we had that got close was that after about the eighth year, they would they would get a market value of the property eight years, you know, whatever it was worth eight years from now, and they may give us a, the ability to buy it then. But in the meantime, we are paying eight years of rent. Yes. With no credit towards the purchase. Correct. Okay, that doesn't sound too good. Tom, I sent you a copy of the prosecutor's opinion where they stated that um, the board of elections or, or a, a portion of it or something has to be in the county seat. Did you have a chance to review that? I, I, I reviewed that, and I don't, I don't think it says that, but the prosecutor's here and he can comment. As I read it, uh, it's an opinion that says, uh, based under Ohio law, there appears to be no law, uh, statutory or otherwise, that says it has to be in the county seat. That's oh, true. so, okay, because all these years I've had that in my yeah, mind, that, that we had to have one location in the county seat. I don't know if I heard it or if I picked it up from that opinion and misread it. Madam Commissioner, we've, our office has issued an opinion saying that uh, there's no statutory obligation for the, the Board of Elections to have an office in the county seat. So we can put and this in a central location and be very safe. When did you legally. issue that opinion? July 6th of 2001. Do you have a copy yes. available? That's the same one I sent you, wasn't it? Tom? Yes, I believe so. Thank you, Justice. Mr. Innes, I believe, rendered the opinion on behalf of the office. Does, does your board desire to keep a location in Elyria and one in Lorraine, even if we put it in a central location? I don't think we see a need to have anything open on a permanent basis. We think there might be a need, as other counties do, to open up satellite offices maybe two weeks to a month before election and maybe after election just because of the traffic for, for voter registration and voting. But I think that's the only need we see right now in the two cities if we have to consolidate outside of them. Understand, I mean, I've, you know I've been here before, and I've been a champion all these years of two offices because I know both cities are aggressively pursuing downtown renovation and commercial activity is important. And unless there was a good reason to, to move, I didn't, which I didn't see, by the way. I'm not sure consolidating saves any money. Uh, but uh, now that we have this directive from the Secretary of State, the game has somewhat changed, and we're, we're pretty, the handwriting is pretty clear now. We need to consolidate. Do you think that we could put a satellite in, say, for example, the title office? <coughs> well, the satellite, a satellite could be any place space is available, uh, Commissioner Basie. I mean, but I, I mean, how, how much space, how many people would you um, foresee in a satellite? Before, just before and after election times? Right. Staff have any idea? Thought about that? I think it's a bit premature to discuss that when we haven't figured out what our housing or the main uh, operation is going to be. 
I, but I, I think once we resolve that, then we have a better idea. I, 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 would spec I would speculate you'd talk about an office being opened uh, potentially in each city with two or three staff people there for a couple of weeks or a month before and after election. Other board members have any comments? We haven't really discussed this in detail, but I think that's sort of what I, what I anticipate. Bob? I would think that would be a maximum if it's yeah. necessary at all. We don't know. Yeah, it, may, it may not be necessary at all. I mean, once we get consolidated and get up and running, as technology becomes better and better, and if we're centrally located, uh, it, it, we, may not, we may not ask you for that, but that's, that's a possibility because we are mm -hmm. walking away from the, oh, the concept we've had for years of, a, of an office in each of the two large cities. I think that's what we need to do. We need to know all the possibilities, all the pros and cons, and so that we can determine and all of us can make a good decision. Um, anybody else have anything to offer? I, I am Elizabeth Rummix, R-U-M-I-C-S, Oberlin, and I am going to be sneaky and take this occasion with all of the members of the Board of Election here to indicate once again the public's concern about electronic voting machines, the ones that will be chosen, how we will be educated to use them, and most particularly the absence of any paper trail so as to be able to double check. More and more stories are coming out about the difficulties with electronic voting machines. And it has to be that the public can trust them and trust the results. And so I hope the Board of Elections will take this into account and also take into account the need of the public to have reassurance on what it is they are choosing and exactly how uh, reliable it can be. Well, I can assure you we share all those concerns and we're paying very close attention to that along with the Secretary of State who's actually picking the vendors. We're not. I mean, the, the vendors for Lorraine County are off a predetermined list approved by the Secretary of State. From what I hear this morning, because we're, you know, we're under pressure to make some moves, if, if the Roland building is not available because all he wants to lease and the commissioners are not inclined, then, then it would strike me that we, we need to agree immediately that you're going to build a building for us, uh, pick a location, and then decide how we're going to configure our two offices for the year or year and a half. We have to wait until we can move in somewhere. The pressure is heavy this year. This is the worst year for this to happen with the presidential and the early primary. We're talking a January 2nd filing day to March primary, the heaviest voter turnout we have of any of the, any of the election years. Uh, and we're going to be in a state of flux with our staff and equipment, and that's not good. Madam Chair, may I make a comment? Sure. Uh, members of the board and chairman, I just, um, Ms. Jacobic sent us a letter uh, dated uh, November 17th regarding the actions that you took last Friday. And I just want to say that, um, as we heard earlier with the Lorain County Transit, because there was not face-to-face -face communication between boards, there's some misconception about what was transpiring. And I'd just like to say that I don't believe that it's possible for the Board of Commissioners to negate um, the move of the Board of Elections to consolidate offices in Lorraine, which was apparently your plan. And uh, that's your plan, and I don't believe that we have the authority to negate that, and I take exception to that comment in this letter, which is only a part. It's offered for background and to the other thing. But, and I don't think that that's what this board did last Thursday. I think what we did was listen once again to a proposal <coughs> Uh, and that was the Gates building proposal. And uh, uh, after some discussion, we decided that maybe that wasn't the best alternate available. So then as a kind of a progression step, we, we said, well, then we'll take the architect that we had engaged to do a study about space there and go back to the original building on Broad Street, a new building, which we had all dis also discussed. And, and we appreciate the fact that you've discussed these things at length over a period of time, and we just want you to realize that we have done as well. I am extremely pleased that your board has decided that there should be one office centrally located. I think that's something at least this commissioner and I have uh, thought for a long time on some services, and we were taken to great task um, previously when we purchased the uh, Cook Building and um, move the Department of Job and Family Services there. No major city likes to see employees leave their area and go to another area, and I fully understand that. But um, 
at that time, parking was the main consideration as far as I'm concerned, and I believe that the decision that we made back then has proven to be a good and wise decision for Lorain County, and that's what our focus should be. Um, we bought some more property out there in anticipation of whatever probably for more parking more than anything else because if you ever drive by that parking lot on any given day it is usually f pretty full there's not much room for um, more cars so uh, the concept I still think is a good concept I think it's our job to work with you to do whatever you think is best in, in, in terms of what we think is best and how we spend the public dollars and I think we're kind of at a crossroads I don't know what we should do today I don't know what suggestion you might have I you know, I'm perfectly willing, I as one commissioner, am perfectly willing to purchase that building. And as a matter of fact, my recollection is that Commissioner Vasey wanted to purchase that building several years ago, the one that you're talking about now. And uh, it, it's a good building, it is centrally located, and it has great potential. But we also have taken a position, at least the two of us have in the past, that we want to be owners instead of renters, because uh, that's to me, personally, that's a better way to spend the, the taxpayers' dollars. I am not against uh, um, people making profits. I think that's what keeps our economy going around. But uh, um, if we could work out something with Mr. Rowland to purchase that property, it doesn't have to be the first year, but uh, some type of a lease that he would grant to us so that, number one, he's making money on his investment, which is, is legitimate, and number two, it's meeting our needs, and then you can go forward. I would certainly be in favor of that. So do you have any comments to make about that? Uh, you have any suggestions? I, 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 again, I'll make this comment, the board can, other board members can. I think the consensus on our board right now is that if we consolidate, uh, particularly our board members from Lorraine, and I, and I understand their thoughts, is that it should not be to downtown Elyria because that would be too far of a drive for the City of Lorraine people, which is, which is a large population center, and also getting out on 254 would open up the, the rest of the county because of access to Route 2. So my thoughts this morning are, if you you know, if, if Mr. Rowland doesn't want to sell, I understand you have pro you have property out there. We're prepared to agree with you that you'll build a building for us now on 254. Move forward, build that as fast as you can, and we'll do what we have to do in the meantime. Does it solve our problems that are immediate and, and, and with the well, well, no. I mean, if, if, you, if we do that, then we, then we, we as a board, and, and coming back to you possibly for more money, have to do something to consolidate or consolidate with some skeleton crew in Elyria or Lorraine for the year to a year and a half that we have to operate until a new building is available. Is there a problem with uh, renting the two locations as they are now, just staying there until we get the building completed? Yeah, the, the, problem, the problem with Commissioner Vasey is we have this directive from the Secretary of State that we have to have a T1 line a in T1. place, someplace, 24-7 connected, and I'm being told by the technical people, and I'm not a technical person, I'm being told by the technical people that it really doesn't work to have a T1 line in Lorraine and Elyria, let alone it would be the additional cost for a T1 line plus a server in both places. Now, Mr. Giardini has some expertise in this field and thinks that we could have a T1 line in Lorraine and connect the Elyria office by other means of communication. Is that from the telephone company to T1? Yeah. Well, it's... Did you check on it? It, it, it comes to the phone company. Uh, I think the issue of the, the two separate offices, I was reading some updates, and it looks like one of the... You have that information from the state. It looks like we need a, another dedicated server. If we do that in uh, O'Leary, is that correct? How much is the server? Uh, it's expensive. Right, I just read that this morning. Servers are expensive. 35000 30, 35, would be an estimate. Can we move that to the new location when we when you get to the new location, you, really don't, you don't need two T1 lines and two servers. I mean, maybe the county the commissioner might have some use for it elsewhere, but so am I hearing you say that we need a T1 line and a server for one for both locations? So we need two of each. That would be servers. one. That, that would be one solution. But still, the technical people have to tell us. See, the, the Secretary of State is very concerned about security. So we we'd now have two secure locations in Lorraine County. But I'm not sure we in Lorraine County would have our database on one computer, which means we're messed. Now we're messed up. I think it's extremely important that you get one computer that tabulates the votes that they don't. Well, it's important to be we get it right yeah. <laughs> from one office to the other. Uh, those of us who are participating in the election night know what it's like to wait when you don't. Get a, lot, the a lot of folks would like to have us get it right. <laughs> uh, well, well, we all would. <laughs> um, I thought while we were exploring the, uh, the Gates option, uh, which was uh, uh, subsequently uh, uh, the board didn't want to head in that direction, I thought we were work. I 
though we were working on consolidating in rank, I thought that plan was still going was still going forward. We, we were looking at that, and there was there was there was some thought as to whether it was necessary for a year and a half to uproot all of our employees from Elyria and have them drive to Lorraine, and was there an option to move to Lorraine with that T1 line, but keep but keep some operations in Elyria connected by computer, and that's where the debate sort of switched on us. So I guess that um, just just to rehash or reiterate what you said, it is your board's recommendation that we rent this property that's offered now um, so that you can move forward? Is that what the suggestion is? They won't just rent, they want to lease it. Well, five lease years whatever. and five years renewal. One option, one option is to lease the building. And, you know, and, and either, I'm not sure the, the, the prosecutor has to look at it whether we would lease it or you would lease it and we would uh, occupy it. But one, one, op one option is, 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 is the Roland building, which could be made available immediately. The other option would be to build a building for us, and then we have to deal with the two offices in the, in the meantime. Madam the, the, uh, the procedure would be that the board would uh, consider a lease that has to submit it to you 30 days before signing it for your approval. Did you hear that? Yeah, the, the statute indicates that we make a recommendation to you to lease, and you have 30 days to consent or say no. And at that point, I wasn't sure, Jeff, whether or not uh, we leased or you leased it, but... Uh, I think we have a bifurcated process right now. We lease one of the locations, and you lease the other location. Okay. okay. So... Uh, we'll follow the been, statute, whatever it says. Yeah, it's been done both ways. Okay. What is your time frame for getting the T1 line in place? I, I, I've read uh, several different things. I heard December 1st we were, we at the were end told of by December. The, we, have to, we have to have it in place and operational by the end of December. End of December. Pursuant to the Secretary of State's request. Is that correct, Marilyn? Yes. yes. Uh, how long does it take to install one of these? I have no idea. Staff, no? The Secretary of State is in process right now. Uh, they're purchasing all of the uh, equipment and so forth. It will be their installation. Uh, they are buying it, they are installing it, they are paying for it. Um, With our money. Excuse me, I just had to add that. <laughs> I apologize. It is, it is their schedule, not ours, and, and the good thing is we don't have to deal with that here. No, we have well, to deal they, with something much more uh, significant as far as I'm concerned. But the, do you know, Marilyn, how long it takes to install one of these things? No, I don't. You have a clue. No. Anybody here? Anybody? A Tony? Take a what's a while? Probably a week? Two of, weeks? No, I'd Three? say it takes every bit of 30 days to get something like that through. Thank you. Would the state install the two locations or just one? They are doing one location and they don't want us to. Uh, we would only be permitted to have that one T1 line to their office because of security issues. All right, so if we put in two, would they both be tied in together and, and then tied into the state? Can, will it all work as one or? No, because what happens is then you have, um, there's going to be activity going on on a live basis. As we input data, uh, it's immediately transmitted to the Secretary of State. They are inputting other uh, aspects of, of the registration data and, you know, beaming it back, if you will, where we complete it. And that's an ongoing basis for all of the activity. Then what you have with this, uh, you know, suggestion that, that we operate with the two separate uh, databases in two locations, uh, in addition to the servers and all the cost of doing that, duplicating the cost, uh, we have one office that has partially up-to-date uh, information, another office with partially up-to-date information that really has not been communicated together very well. There is no one place in Lorraine County that you would have a complete uh, database that is absolutely up to date at any one time if you try doing that and it, that doesn't seem to be a reasonable way to do business well that's why I wonder if they if they if they can be combined <coughs> somehow so that all the information that, that's put into them goes into one but I'm hearing you say but like we have a server here at the county and all the information goes into that one server I'm not real familiar with how computers work and that's why I'm asking. Well one of the troubles we have, at least myself personally, I don't have that knowledge. We don't have any computer information on our staff. 
I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe the commissioners have to hire somebody to, to come in and get the answers for us. I don't know the answer. I, I know we can put one T1 line in Lorraine or Elyria, and that T1 line will meet the Secretary of State's requirements. And what we would do if we kept people in the other office and to communicate, I'm not sure how that works. I just don't know and don't know the cost. I think we're going to have to find out. Didn't you tell me that the telephone company does T1 lines? Well, there's other people that do them, too. We can find out. If you want the data, we can find out. Yeah, why don't we do that? And, and let's not play with it. Let's get on it right away. We'll find that out, then. Betty, yeah, are you sure. in agreement for Mr. us Ruth, to find out about those T1s? I have the courtesy of Mr. Russo. Would like to speak just for a second? I'm happy to hear Mr. Russo. Uh, this, this T1 that's, that's coming into the office is a dedicated T1 from the Secretary of State to the Lorraine County Board of Elections site, whatever site that may be. It's not a matter of you buying a T1. Anybody can buy a T1 from a local phone company. This is a dedicated T1. I think SBC Ameritech, if that's still their name, I don't know they've changed names, but <laughs> that's who's got the state contract for all 88 counties in Lorraine County. Now, the point is, we have an opportunity at this point in time to put both offices together at an agreed upon location. And let me tell you, it hasn't been an easy uh, compromise on the board side. We have this opportunity. If we go on for a month or two months and we run a T1 to uh, Lorraine, and then we decide we have to do high speed between Lorraine and Elyria, that's going to be an additional three to four to five to six hundred dollars a month in telephone bills because you know we're dealing with two different phone companies now. One location will give us one phone company. You, what you have right now is you have a a situation where we can move to one location for the same cost we're doing both locations, but we will increase or decrease our expenses by one phone system because we'll and send tell at that location, I believe. Uh, there will be other economies of scales that we can bring down because we don't have to ma maintain two offices, two huge copy machines, two servers. Now, this T1 between the Secretary of State and two offices will require an additional $35,000 server which would be useless after a location, move to one location. In addition to the fact that uh, there's maintenance contracts, five dollars $600 a year, in addition to that. So uh, if we make the move, we just have a $35,000 service. It's not covered under HAVA grant funds. That would come out of the, the county's budget, the Board of Elections budget. So we've got this opportunity, but the T1 gets done in Lorraine within the next three days, which would be between uh, me again, the end of December. For all practical purposes, we're able to stay where we're at. We have the opportunity now, after we've done that, and incurred that expense, incurred those line charges. I don't know whether the compromise or the one locations worth it anymore. That's my opinion. And I some of the other, four, other board members would like to talk to it, but Do I think our opportunity any? to combine now is, is here right now, and we have a small <coughs> window. Do we have any idea the size of a building? Which building? Any building, the building that we would need. 12 to 16. What's that? 12 to 16,000 square feet, and I believe it's 15,000 square feet is the, the property at 254. That, that property is already wired with all Cat 5 cables to all the locations in the building because it was a school computer mm -hmm. training center one time. All right. Can it we has an emergency generator back up so that there's a power outage on election night. <clears throat> we can still count. We would need an engineer to get an estimate of cost for a 60,000 foot building, right? Square foot building. For 60,000? 16. 16. 16. Oh, 16,000. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. <coughs> All right, 16,000 square foot building. We would need an architect to get the estimate for the cost. For a new building, if, she's talking yeah. about. Commissioners would extend me a courtesy on Mr. Rothger. He's asked if, I don't know if this is open mic on this issue, but he has a, he'd like to speak on the issue just briefly. Safety Service Director from Elyria. Sure. Mr. Rothger. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, on behalf of the city of Elyria, of course, we'd like to uh, maintain the Board of Elections in downtown Elyria. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Mrs. Blair. Uh, the decision made to put the uh, services out on 254 has worked out well for a number of reasons with parking and uh, just a number of other reasons. But if we can't operate or govern from a bubble. We have two major cities in this county, Lorraine and Elyria, that need to keep our economies and our downtowns thriving. Um, I think it's very important that we, we keep this in downtown Elyria. Uh, in the alternative, uh, that's my position as safety service director and a citizen of Elyria. And as a, in the big picture, as an alternative, as a taxpayer and resident of Lorain County, I would suggest that you own the property that you put this building in and that you put it on 
uh, property that you already own. I, I think the good thing for you is if we use the property on 250 before we own the build, I, if I remember right, is that's captured in the JED with Elyria Township. Never even thought of that, Mr. Cortez. Okay, Cortes. so uh, I oh, think that... Oh, you uh, think we're going to believe <laughs> that? <laughs> I, I, I think that, that that would be favorable to your... It, it, it never crossed downtown, my mind. But it would be favorable to Elyria's position, I believe. As far as the, the, the continue to have the same number of taxpayers in Elyria, yes, it would. I, I, do, I do think that... Um, the Board of Elections, although technology has changed and probably less people do walk-in business at the board than did 20, 30 years ago, it still draws a great number of people. And I think the commissioner's idea of uh, including the uh, title office and the uh, uh, license bureau both uh, generate a number of people in our downtown, and we appreciate it, and we'd appreciate any consideration to that you could give in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, may I just comment? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Giardini, go ahead. If I could just follow up on what uh, the point that Mr. Rousseau made, I think we're at a point where, uh, you know, our job is to <coughs> run efficient elections, and um, it, we are getting um, squeezed on time here. We are about to have the, the biggest election we, we run in, in any given time period, which is a presidential election. Uh, add to that all the primaries that we have with precinct people, and with uh, local elections, and it gets to be a very complicated uh, election, a complicated ballot. Uh, our staff, of course, we expect to run those elections efficiently, uh, although ultimately we're responsible. We look to them to do that. And right now, they're kind of in between uh, situations. Uh, I think the point that Mr. Rousseau made is a valid one. We have a very, very small window to make a decision here. We have a building that's built that would meet, uh, at least based on my observation, our needs, and it meets the compromise of having a centrally located uh, building. That would be the, the building that Mr. Rowland owns that's on 254. If the county prefers to own, and, and although I'm not entirely sure I understand the philosophy behind that, I'm not going to question that. that I think that's a commissioner's decision, not a Board of Elections decision. If you prefer to own, uh, I say fine, but it means that you're either going to have to make a deal with him very quickly or uh, begin plans for a, a new building. That's a year to a year and a half off, best case scenario. <clears throat> if you're going to do that, we need to know that and we need to know it soon because uh, it is my understanding that we are making preparations to, for the most part, consolidate at the Lorraine office primarily because the Lorraine office has a big warehouse and the new electronic voting <coughs> machines that we're going to be purchasing will be housed there. It, they can fit there. Uh, we will be cramped for space. There's no question about it. We're going to have people sitting on top of one another in Lorraine. But if we knew that was a temporary situation, a year or, or a year and a half, I guess that would be livable. The, the other choice, though, is to go into a building that's already built, ready to go. And we'd make one move to that building, and, and that would be it. Now, uh, we did not sit down and negotiate a lease with Roland. Uh, a, I wasn't sure we had the authority to, and uh, B, we didn't really have the time to do that. I'd much rather the commissioners do that with, with the county prosecutor and with Mr. Roland and his legal counsel. What I'm saying is if you're thinking about doing that with a lease purchase or something like that, you ought to let your wishes be known, and if you're not happy with the price, uh, get them in a room, hammer away, and see if you can't get a deal made. But if you're going to do that, get a deal made quickly. Or we need to continue on with our consolidation to Lorraine, keep a satellite office open in Elyria, and I think we can run a high-speed line from Elyria to Lorraine to hook up to the one server, which then goes to Columbus. There is additional expense associated with that. I don't know what I don't know what that additional expense is, but there will be some additional expense associated with that. If you think that additional expense, whatever it is, it's three or four or five hundred dollars a month, is worth it, because in the long run we will be better off economically by owning our own building or you owning the building that you lease to the Board of Elections. Fine. 
I haven't made an analysis of that. I haven't looked at the $9,800 a month that they've offered it to us versus what it would cost you to build a 15,000 square foot building from scratch. Someone needs to do that. Well, that's what I was asking. If we can get an estimate, do we need an architect to get an estimate of cost? Is 16,000 square foot sufficient? And even for the future? I mean, I don't want to just look for uh, a year. I'd like to look 10 years, 25 years down the road. Is that sufficient space? That, that's sufficient. But Commissioner Basie, uh, I will tell you that in my, my humble opinion, it'll be very, very difficult for you to get a good cost estimate of a building in the short time frame that we have available. Uh, uh, an architect, the first thing he's going to want to do is meet with the board and our staff, and he's going to want to lay out the specifications of our needs for that building. Uh, that's going to take some time, and then that architect is probably going to, to go around to subcontractors in the area and get some idea what it would cost to build something that we need. Uh, it, the whole space doesn't need to be office space. Part of it can be warehouse space. That's cheaper mm -hmm. space than, let's say, office space is. I, I, Jim, can I, you, can you I, feel I think it's more like a 30 to 60 day process to do that evaluation properly and get a, I mean, you, we could probably do a rough estimate of a, maybe $80 a square foot or $100 a square foot to build a new building. I think they give us a rough one of 120 some thousand yeah, dollars. With, with, the, with the attached warehouse space, we're probably, and I, I would be hopeful that we would be in the about $100 a square foot um, uh, to build, uh, which on a 16,000 square foot building is $1.6 million. If we uh, had, if we put uh, that out for bond, which I'm not sure we would need to do, uh, we'd be looking at debt service of about $85,000 a year if we uh, built within the 1.6. But what are we seven. paying right now? Uh, about 110000 yeah, There's a difference. Okay. Uh, would you check on that, see if you can get an estimate of cost and, and length of time to build? Mr. Blevins would like to address the commission. Commissioners, uh, my prior or my opinion would be that we should at this point, keep things the way they are, an office in Elyria, an office in Lorraine, until we're able to, to construct a building or lease a building. My reasoning for that is uh, we do have an, an important election coming up very quickly, and uh, I, I don't like to see the uh, employees uprooted, uh, and just to be uprooted again and returned back to Elyria or to wherever, wherever the building is built. I have no problem. My preference, of course, was to have the building in Elyria, uh, basically going along with what you had indicated uh, on Broad Street, a new building specially made for our organization. However, I have no problem with it going on 254. That seems to be a, a, a compromise that's, uh, that's okay with me, at least. Thank you. Thank you, John. Madam Chair? Um, it seems to me through the discussion that um, I think I as a commissioner would like to offer to Mr. Rowland the opportunity to hear what we might be uh, able to negotiate with him with respect to a lease there. Um, this board could meet in a special session next Tuesday and you'd have the weekend uh, Saturday and Sunday, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a problem. And Monday. Uh, any, this is an important decision. Well, we'd be happy to. I'll, I'll be here. I'm not, I can't speak to the rest of the board. I'll be here next Tuesday if you have a special meeting. I'm re prepared to be here and appear if you'd like. Well, and, and in the meantime, he can talk. And because uh, we're not meeting on Thursday because it's Thanksgiving. And uh, would, would you be. Uh, you have a, you I don't have know. A, I asked you to get the calendar. Well, I just think that. Well, I was going to suggest to you that I, I assumed you had a regular meeting on Tuesday, but I mean. It needs to move that quickly. We're prepared. To, I'm prepared to be here next Tuesday and start to get an answer because we simply have to give marching orders to people. And and I don't, um, with respect to the third commissioner who is not here today, I think that uh, he at least needs to uh, be made aware of what the discussion was. And um, and I, I would like to see if uh, Mr. Rowland would uh, be interested in negotiating with us. I think it, it's a clear thing if you could do, get the right price and the right terms. Um, my, uh, it sounds like a win-win. I will engage them again this afternoon, and we will see if we can sit down and have some meaningful dialogue. Uh, and I would just like to, uh, someone looked at the uh, building from your board staff uh, in order to get that proposal, I assume. So if there's someone on your board that has uh, 
a personal uh, relationship with Mr. Rowland, perhaps they could extend um, I a word on our behalf. I'm not sure any of us do, but... Uh, well, I didn't know, yeah. but... Uh, I don't. The proposal just came, and it's dated November the 13th, and um, this is the 20th, so it's been available for a whole week. I tend to agree with Mr. <laughs> Blevins. I don't see why we should move twice. Just why can't we just stay as we are until we get a building built? Well, that's that, one that's of the an options. That's an option. But but I do think that there's an option here to move to this location, and I'd like to know if in fact uh, the price might be right. I'll, I'll get you the information you're seeking. So would you be well, uh, able to meet next Tuesday? Did you get it? It's clear. Okay. What time? Yes, what time would you like us next Tuesday? What time is convenient for you? I'm, I don't know. I don't have my book, but just I'll make it work. You like early meetings? Early, early morning, earlier the better. <laughs> nine thirty. Clear. clear. Okay. Um, Eight thirty, nine o'clock. Nine thirty. Nine thirty next Tuesday, gentlemen. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Commissioner Blair. Did you ask me a question? No, I'm, I'm waiting to see if 9.30 next Tuesday yeah, 930 would seem to be okay. And Mr. Cordes, you had a qu question? Well, before you all leave, I'd like to invite you to join us on our tour of the Justice Center if you have a little extra time, if you have it inside. Uh, we don't often see you all together, so uh, we'll, we're going to go over there about 11.30, so please stay with us if you have some time. It'd be a uh, real nice time to see what's going on over there. Thank you. Thank you for coming, all of you, and Marilyn and Ken as well. Okay. Okay, at 10.45, we did have a mental health, mental health board and uh, alcohol drug addiction services. And I believe they are here. I saw them walk in. Thank you for waiting for us. <laughs> Come on down. I think this is another consolidation issue if the Board of Elections wants to stick around in here. <laughs> did, did you like my lead in there? That's pretty good. Pretty good segue. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's nice. Yes. Uh, would you please introduce yourselves? Elaine Jorgens, Executive Director of the Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Board. Bill Harper, uh, Executive Director of the Board of Mental Health. Marita Ferguson, member of the board mental health and the family member of the board meeting that in my family is a mental health problem. And our vice, vice chair also. James Heron, the uh, mental health board. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I guess the floor is yours. Oh. But you might have to go up to the microphone to, the to microphone. speak. And please. Give your name and spell your last name. Till Harper, H-A-R-P-E-R. -E Pretty easy one. Uh, commissioners, uh, the uh, Ohio General Assembly uh, in their last uh, budget bill included an option for the seven uh, urban counties in the state that maintain separate alcohol and drug addiction services and mental health boards to uh, consider combining those boards. That option uh, goes through uh, January 1st of uh, 2004. So it is, there is a time limited option there. And um, Elaine and I, uh, I, have to, I have to say that one of the great pleasures of coming to Lorraine County is the opportunity to work with Elaine at the Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Board. Uh, she was one of the first people to uh, invite me to meet with her on a regular basis. And, and we did this even before this uh, issue came up. And uh, so we met on this and uh, decided that um, we really needed to take a serious look at this so that uh, a recommendation could be made by both boards to the Board of County Commissioners. And uh, quite frankly, of the seven counties that uh, have been presented with this issue, we were the only ones to really, uh, I think, do a thorough analysis of the impact of such a merger in Lorraine County. Um, I, I just make a few comments about our, our reasoning for um, recommending that the boards remain separate. 
um, and then give Elaine an opportunity to talk from her perspective. Uh, first and foremost, I think we have to recognize that uh, the state of Ohio maintains two separate cabinet level departments, uh, one for mental health and one for alcohol and drug addiction services. What this means uh, for us is that each of these cabinet level agencies has their own laws, their own uh, rules, uh, guidelines, uh, reporting requirements, and standards. And uh, I can tell you from experience, since before I came to Lorain County, I had the opportunity for a period of 13 years to run a combined board. That uh, makes it very difficult to uh, respond to uh, two separate cabinet level agencies. And they, of course, do things just differently enough to make it, uh, a, a, in many cases, a duplication. Um, that's one of the reasons why we're recommending to maintain these boards separate. Uh, another reason is that the, what we've heard from our, uh, our primary customers, the clients and consumers that we serve, is a recommendation that for the time being these boards remain separate. Uh, Elaine and I met with representatives of the recovering community, the Alcoholics Anonymous community here in uh, Lorain County, and they were very much in favor of maintaining separate boards. And, uh, and then finally, the last reason is that we've done a lot to collaborate. Uh, for example, here in Lorain County, we're one of the few counties that actually has uh, separate residential facilities, uh, one for men, one for women, who are both mentally ill and also um, have a chemical dependency. And so we've had the opportunity to collaborate and have taken advantage <laughs> of those opportunities and finally have committed to forming a joint committee of our two boards to continue to explore ways in which we col can collaborate. Because we definitely feel the, the importance and the urgency of looking for administrative efficiencies wherever we can. Um, and we've done a lot in that area in the past as well. So just as kind of a, an overview of, of our thinking and uh, why we've recommended to you that these uh, two organizations remain separate for the current time. We do think, however, that in the long run it will make sense for uh, these two operations to merge. Um, but we'd like to have the opportunity, the metaphor that we've used is we'd like the opportunity to date for a while before we get married. So Elaine, I'll turn over to you to make some comments. <coughs> Good morning, Elaine Jorgas, G-E-O-R-G-A-S, with the Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Board. To um, offer, and if the Board of Elections people are still here, some of the efficiencies we've done with the Mental Health Board is exactly the discussion that just happened, the T1 line. Um, back in 1999, the State Departments of Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health combined with a multi-community agency shared information system. We were forced with a choice that the Board of Elections have right now of one T1 line going down to Columbus for all the clients that receive alcohol, drug, and mental health services. We were able to work that out. Um, there is a T1 line housed at the Mental Health Board. We have a bridge T1 with a router system, so it's possible, so just so you know that. Um, efficiencies we, um, I believe, share a lot. Um, our collaborations with children, the children's cluster, um, our shared representation on the Children and Families First Council, um, the Community Corrections Act Board, and as well as um, besides the residential housing Mr. Harper spoke of, we were one of nine counties that uh, three years ago had a substance abuse mentally ill treatment grant. And so it w again was an innovative partnership that we were able to pull together services and systems locally to help those clients that are, are common in both of our systems. And we also feel that we've got a representation of clients that are also unique to our systems um, in the ways we um, approach them, our prevention, our interventions, and our treatment processes, our um, recovery support groups, the NAMI group, which is the National Alliance for Mentally Ill, the Alcoholics Anonymous Recovery Support System, strongly supporting the clients in both of our constituencies. So I believe we, um, although our recommendation looks like a status quo, keep what you're d you've decided back in 1999, we've done a lot. Our collaborations through our client services and our commitments, I believe, speak for where we're at right now. So thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a question for Bill, uh, either of you, but I think Bill made the statement that um, 
about perhaps joining in the future. And my yes. question to you is, is uh, if the commissioners uh, approve your joint recommendation today to remain separate, does that option remain available in the future? Please. Thank you. I should know the answer, but it, you speak so much more eloquently to the oh, issue. Thank you. Uh, good question. The, now, the legislature has simply authorized the commissioners in those seven counties to make this decision through January 1st of 2004. However, uh, it, it's, it's my impression that if Lorain County indeed felt that this option needed to be reopened, it would not be a difficult uh, political thing to get done through the, through the Ohio General Assembly. <laughs> we really feel that that, uh, that could easily be attached to a, to a budget language bill as it was this time. Don't believe that there would be any um, animosity to that or uh, concern with that option. So I really believe that that option remains open, even though the, the statute that was passed is, is time limited. Okay, but it would require uh, some other legislative action. It would require some other legislative action, Thank yes. You. Well, Commissioner Blair, if you're in agreement, I would um, ask the clerk to put this on the agenda for next week so that hopefully Commissioner Moore will be here and be able to make a decision with us. I think that we could probably do that on Tuesday as long as we're talking about consolidating or not consolidating. <laughs> we might as well just keep going with that discussion. <laughs> um, it doesn't right. matter whenever, so just so she puts it on the agenda that we, a full I board. would put it, yes, okay. when we have a full board, but I would put it that we would support uh, keeping them separated. Did you have anything else you wanted to say to us? No, I think we're fine. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming today. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Sorry you had to wait. Thank you. And oh, appreciate no what you do on behalf of the clients that you serve uh, throughout the Ring County. And, and thank you for your support. It means a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Can I share a gift with you? Um, <laughs> as part of our process, we received a three-year state incentive grant, and it's to um, look at attitudes and use of tobacco, alcohol, and other drug use amongst our youth. Mr. Cordes represented your office last week at a key leaders meeting. However, I think, um, and I feel, since you weren't able to attend, you are a key leader. We have oh. keychains for you. <laughs> did you give one to Jim? Did you give one to Jim? I did. did. Yeah. <laughs> so thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Elaine. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have, may I make a comment off issue? Yes, I may. Laurita Ferguson. Off issue, I'd like to say first, I'm beginning to feel like coffee with the commissioners is a real good place to be. It's kind of <laughs> oh, neat. thank you. Uh, from an unprofessional here. And I'm happy to see that we have a lot of women politicians coming up out there in the young women that are, I assume, in training. You'll be our future leaders. Go for it, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Marita. I told the girls this morning, I said, this, well, I'm not sure what I said. It's just probably better I don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Second like, thoughts. Huh? Something like you go, girls, is okay. <laughs> and okay. Those, of, those of us with daughters also appreciate that. Thank you. Echo you, that sound. Thank Yes, I would uh, move to go into executive. I, I just, may I try? Um, we have 20 minutes before we have to go to the Justice Center. We have an executive session. I still see some people in the audience, and I wonder, uh, we never concluded our public comment. Uh, we just diverted from um, to our scheduled appointment. So is there anyone else in the audience? Uh, anyone I else see, that would like um, to address the board here? OK, sir, would you take the podium, give your name, spell your last name? Morning. My name is John Romanic. I live at 9929 East River Road. I'm here in response to a request from the citizens on East River Road. On September 19th, we gave the board a letter of objection with regard to uh, SOAR project number 108. <coughs> we had no response. We delivered a letter. Uh, on October 21st, requesting a response. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we had a telephone call from the clerk 
on the 22nd or 23rd, excuse me. Commissioners are not planning to discuss this matter until the 2nd of March in 2004 or later. Also, we were told that a letter would be sent to each resident in two to three weeks explaining the commissioner's position regarding this matter. To date, we have received no letter. My question is, are we going to get that letter? Uh, yes, you are, Mr. Romantic. I spoke to Mr. Cordes uh, yesterday regarding this issue, and I'm sorry, are you representing um, the residents on East River? Is, is that the area, or are you speaking generally? Uh, I'm speaking for the people who are south of Fuller Road. South? Yes, ma'am. Of Fuller Road, on East River? On East River. Okay. Um, th those people were the uh, subject of the public hearing that was held uh, September 15th so ago. at the college yes ma'am all right um, I believe that the board decided to agenda this item in March you, you made a reference to it and I, I thought it was March the 11th but uh, well, we, I was told a second or third week or later okay well March 11th would be the second week thank you and uh, uh, Mr. Cordes uh, and the staff are working on a draft letter that hasn't been sent yet. I understand, being a Carlisle Township resident, I understand that you have some concerns. I do as well. And uh, the providing of sewer service in this area is uh, a topic that I've long been involved in in my previous life and in my present life. So I know that you have some concerns. And uh, um, we're going to speak to the issue in March about how we may or may not proceed. Okay. Uh, if you have further questions, uh, we can kind of off the cuff answer them in the time frame that we've got. Well, the only question, you know, we, we've been having a few meetings with the residents. Uh, people are still concerned that, you know, we've had no response. I think it would behoove the commissioners to at least give the residents some response. And I fully and, and agree with you. Stating their position on what they intend to do. And I think that that's uh, uh, only um, realistic on, on your part. Uh, but on our part, it just sometimes it, it takes a little time I, to get to that it, issue. We understand it, ma'am. We understand and, uh, it's a big issue. And, and you know, Mr. Romantic, that, that we had four public hearings that week, um, and one that we postponed maybe indefinitely, uh, but at least for a future time so that. Um, where I, I particularly am not unmindful of the issue that you're bringing forward to us. The, uh, sir. Well, there was concern that, you know, there was, there was talk at the September 15th meeting about redoing the road, putting in the other sewer line in, in conjunction with that because Mr. Carney had a million for grant to do the road. Uh, I will, at this time, uh, since I'm up here and I have the opportunity, wish to state that the road is a total disaster right now due to the water line that was put in by the city. Understand why it was done and everything. But it, if you lived in that area and you have to drive that road, it's like running a minefield. Um, I know. And I believe that Mr. Cordes will mention to you, but uh, we approved last week a Public Works Commission application. Mr. Carney is submitting to repave that section of the road next spring or whenever they get the uh, paperwork done and it goes through the process. Jim, you want to elaborate? Yes. W w whether a, a positive or a negative vote is decided upon by this board, because I don't believe any outcome has been predetermined with regard to uh, that proposed project. Uh, the road issue is going to be blended with that decision so that we don't repave the road only to six months later dig it back up. Uh, so uh, we, we have that in mind and we are trying to correlate those, those issues for the, for the, for the best outcome uh, for the area. Uh, one of the issues we had here is we had a little uh, uh, difficulty coordinating schedules. Madam Clerk has been coordinating schedules for these decisions. My understanding is the letters will go out to all the affected property owners. Normally, the law requires us only to contact those individuals who have filed a uh, letter of uh, discontentment with the project. 
an objection. Uh, we're going to take the other step and contact every affected property owner on every sewer project. Well, we had board. a petition letter that had about 40 names out of the 51. Right. Well, we'll, we'll notify fair. everybody, though. I think I think that's the only fair thing to do. We appreciate uh, so that. we'll we'll go out to every affected property owner with the letter very shortly. We appreciate your patience. I believe March 11th is the. I believe so. That's the second Monday, or excuse That's me, the, the second, second Thursday, Thursday in uh, two, March of 2004. So, uh, and to answer this gentleman's question, there'll be nobody digging up anything uh, before that period, and uh, there'll be another opportunity to have to have that issue reviewed again, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Mr. Romantic. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address the board? My name is Ernest Jones. I also live on East River Road. Uh, I see we have plans. We have a map of the area that also includes some other streets there. When, when are we going to tell those people what's going on? I was in the dark myself until in the last three, four months. The, <clears throat> the, only, the only project that I'm aware of, sir, right now with regard to East River uh, is the laterals on the uh, the trunk line running through there. Now, with regard to what may happen in five or 10 or 15 years, we, we really haven't gotten down that road, but eventually, and maybe not in, in our tenure here or, or in our lifetime, all of us, there's eventually going to be sewage. Uh, I, I don't know when that eventuality will occur. I don't think it's going to happen anytime in the very near future, uh, to be sure. Uh, but uh, it's inevitable that, th that those roads will eventually be sewered. But right now, there is no activity towards that direction. That's the best answer I can give you. That's, that shouldn't alleviate completely your fears, but recognizing that we're not currently engaged in looking further than uh, uh, putting the laterals on East River at this time. Okay. Uh, one other uh, thing is uh, when I became aware that we were going to get a sewer down East River, I went to the township meeting. I was told by one of the trustees that uh, the state law said that if you were within 200 foot of a sewer, you had to hook in, and that they were mandated by the state. I understand there's never been any tests run in our area. No, normally, the law uh, requires uh, that, if, uh, and it actually tasks the health department to, for enforcement of this issue, that if you're within uh, 200 feet uh, of a uh, sewer, that you sh you're required to uh, access that sewer rather than have an on-site system. There's been different ways that the health departments handle that, and they, they have not always been uh, 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 demanding that that, that occur. Uh, they've, they've recently upgraded their posture with respect to that and wanting these tap-ins. Along East River, what I believe they've done or the posture they've taken is that they're requiring the tap-in upon the property being sold or changing hands. Um, this board first became aware of this issue because a homeowner was uh, wishing to sell property for a parent that had, I believe, maybe gone into a nursing home or some other personal situation. And she was unable to sell the property because she had to tap into that sewer at that point. And there was a lot of other associated costs and so forth. And this board started looking at that issue uh, with what regard to how this was, was occurring down on East River. And that's what moved this project to the forefront and got it reviewed. Well. Going back to the sewer 200 foot from our property, there was a sewer put in there that we were not allowed to tap in yet. They're going to hold us to work, excuse me, within the 200 foot of a sewer that we cannot even tap into. Is that the sewer on East River, sir, or is there an, uh, That's the one they run 18 foot. I understand uh, they put it down 18 foot. Uh, I saw an article in the Chronicle here in the last few weeks that uh, said they had miscalculated and they had it too deep. I'm not sure what they decided to do, but I would assume that they're going to have to raise that because it is too low. 
but uh, we're not not near a sewer, as I say. Uh, there were no tap ins or anything allowed, and I don't feel that that is a thing to. The, I'm going back to what the trustee told me: if you're ever within 200 foot, that uh, you have to tap in, but. I believe the state law also says that you have to, if you put in a sewer, you have to put in for people can tap in for each property owner. Well, and, and, and I think your information is good information. The, 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 uh, the issue really is when the, when the taps are put in, uh, the laterals are, are installed. Uh, the sewer came through as an interceptor sewer, and it was they did not incorporate the the, uh, the laterals into the sewer when it came through. Right. Um, uh, all this, uh, uh, not trying to move away from the issue, but we this uh, most of this administration and the commission, uh, a lot of us weren't here at that point when that occurred. Um, the sewer, in a, in a way, and this is not something you're going to like to hear, but you're not paying for the sewer. If, if they had put the laterals in and required the taps at the time of construction, you would have also had to be assessed for the cost of the sewer, most likely by a, a frontage cost uh, along, along that line. The, the only costs now that are being looked at, uh, and, and maybe won't, we won't proceed, I don't want to indicate to you that that decision has been made, is the cost of the taps and the laterals. At, at, at the when the project was originally when the sewer was originally laid into the ground, if it had been decided at that point to put the laterals in, the homeowners would have had to bear the, not only the cost of the, the taps and the laterals, they would have had to bear the, some of the cost of that sewer coming through too. Uh, so in effect, they're not paying any cost for that sewer coming through. Right. But that doesn't answer the fact that they're going to have to run another sewer through there, and we're going to have to pay for that. That don't really make sense to me. Why not have done it all at one time, one cost? That, they, sir, that, sir, I don't have a good answer the, to. The costs are, I think, out of line. I even made the suggestion at the township meeting that we use local help, put it in there for half. Their argument was uh, they wanted uh, union scale people putting it in there. They knew more about it this type of work than anybody else who works with it. I understand your concern, sir. Okay. I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank, you, thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else? Madam Clerk, I move that we go into executive session for two and a half, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. We've all heard the gruesome statistics concerning child abuse. Maybe you've dismissed them and convinced yourself there's nothing you can do to help. Truth is, you can help. Voices for Children can make you an advocate to a child in Lorain County who desperately needs your help. Make the time to make a difference. Call Voices for Children today and find out how you can become part of the solution in speaking up for an abused child. We need your help. Unsightly litter is often the result of well-intentioned people like you and me being careless at the curb, around business areas, and at work sites. Lucky the ladybug, Ohio's first lady of litter prevention, says nobody wants to live or work around trash. Litter lowers property values and it's costly to clean up. Keep the rain county beautiful. Put the lid on trash. Some of the products that we're going to be utilizing and um, that can be utilized in the construction of this new house we're proposing is um, recycled plastic lumber, 
made out of plastic pop bottles and milk jugs. And in this particular piece, they've utilized um, scraps of lumber or uh, shredded lumber. As you can see, some of the fibers in here. Uh, this other piece right here is, is like a two by four. Uh, it does not use any of the sawdust in it. Uh, it's just another brand. This right here is another um, sort of a piece of lumber that you might use on decking for the post. The roofing material that could be used on this house that we're looking at is made out of recycled rubber and recycled plastic. Uh, you can't do that with regular slate. Uh, it is guaranteed for about 50 years. It comes in a lot of different colors as you can see here. It's very nice. Um, in the color department you can match uh, different um, colors of slate also. You can see there there's three different colors. Um, this slate right here is uh, this plastic uh, um, rubber slate is on the uh, building um, that houses the old fire department in LaGrange, right on a the square there. They, they've just put it on, a local company uh, put it on for them, and a local company also sells this, um, which is always nice for the county that we're getting involved in, in recycling with the businesses. Uh, this uh, is recycled tile that we could probably use um, in the recycled house or the environmentally friendly house. That's something that we're going to be considering. Um, it is made out of recycled plastic and vinyl. Comes in multiple colors. Anything that you can buy probably in, in um, a virgin material, you can get in this recycled mode. This is recycled um, tires and rubber. It's different uh, uh, floor covering. You might want to put something like this down in your rec room possibly. Um, maybe in the kitchen. Uh, there might be some people that would like to do that. This is another style of, of floor covering. Um, comes in tile um, and it's made out of recycled plastic and rubber also. The, the carpeting that could go into the home um, is, is made, this, this carpeting right here is made out of recycled pop bottles, milk jugs. Um, it's an open loop and very plush um, and it wears like iron. They say that you can, um, uh, it won't stain very readily. Uh, this is another uh, style of the carpeting. This is primarily roll goods here uh, and, it's, and it's very good carpeting and you can buy it locally in the county. This is another style of, of carpeting um, that is recycled. The top part is a closed loop and it's basically a commercial type of carpeting and the recycled part of this is uh, in the backing here. This carpeting, as I said, this is virgin material up on top and recycled carpet on the back. They grind it up, put a bonding agent to it and uh, it comes out. And most of the time it's used, used in, in squares and not roll goods. Um, where this is 40% recycled this is basically almost 100% recycled carpet. A lot of times recycled material like this recycled uh, plastic lumber or this, uh, uh, the longevity is, is uh, probably better on some of the materials, okay? And you're not taking a lot of the um, virgin materials that we normally use out of the ground or out of the forest to, to make it. Um, we're utilizing stuff that we already have used and now we're going to reuse it in recycled products. So we're saving a lot on the infrastructure of the world.